Hi everyone, my name is Ho Dongpeng. Today I'm going to present our research achievements, a rapid source localization method in the early stage of large-scale network propagation, supervised by Gao Chao. Next, I will introduce our work from the above five aspects. First, background. Nowadays, social platforms are developing shapely. The Global Overview reports 2022 show that more than 4.9 billion people now use the internet, while well, social media users have passed the 4.6 billion mark. Nearly 63% of the world's population is already online and more than half of the world's total population has used social media up to now. At the same time, social networks have also driven the widespread use of social apps. Here are some social apps that are commonly used in daily life. At least 1 billion users of these apps are using them. Facebook even has close to 3 billion users. While well, social networks bring convenience to people, it also has many hidden dangers. For example, rumors on social networks will endanger the stability of the country or society and affect people's normal lives. More specifically, the rumor related to the partisan fight during the U.S. presidential election result in an indirect loss of 14 billion to the government. Not only rumors on the internet can cause great harm, but the harm of computer viruses also shouldn't be underestimated. A virus can called CIH that can attack BIOS information has destroyed more than 16 million computers. Various incidents have shown that it's necessary to detect the culprit on social media, cut off the propagation path, and then reduce the harm to society. The problem definition of source localization is shown in this slide. The input to the problem is a topology of the network and the observed propagation information. Among them, the propagation information includes three categories, namely complete, snapshot, and sensor-based observation. Complete observation needs to know the exact propagation state of all nodes in the network. In comparison, snapshot provides partial knowledge of network states at a given time, and the sensor-based observation first injects sensors into networks and then the propagation dynamics over these sensor nodes are collected include their states, state transition time, and infection directions. The source inferring process can be regarded as a maximum posterior estimation or a maximum likelihood estimation process, that is, using the observed propagation information to find the most likely diffusion source or which source can most likely cause such a propagation situation. We briefly generalize the resolution idea of localization methods corresponding to the three categories of observations. In summary, the corresponding methods based on complete observations and snapshot observations are more concerned with the centrality strategy. Only the message passing based method use a simulation strategy to approach the observed snapshot. 
while the sensor-based methods focus on Monte Carlo simulation and Gaussian estimation. The reference now has proved that the sensor-based method is more efficient than the method based on complete and snapshot observations. So our work focuses more on the sensor-based methods. The technical framework of the sensor-based method is shown in this figure. First, some sensor deployment strategy is applied to pre-deploy some sensors, which are used to capture the propagation information. Second, randomly select a source from the sensor-deployed network and trigger a given propagation model on such a network and the observed propagation information can be observed. Third, these propagation data are input into the source localization method to predict the diffusion source. Then some performance metrics are used to compare the predicted source with the real diffusion source in order to further optimize the source localization method. Next, I will introduce the research motivations of our work. The promise of existing methods to achieve satisfactory prediction accuracy is that all deployed sensors contribute to the observed all information when inferring the source, which cannot restrain the propagation in time. In reality, the earlier the source is recognized and detected in practice, the less loss propagation will cause. But the information in the early stage is relatively lacking, which increases the difficulty of source localization. Second, some existing propagation source localization methods have limited application fields more specifically, the Gaussian-based methods and the corresponding extended methods assume that the propagation spreads along the shortest path. Here show several possible propagation situations simulating from the same node when the infection rates of the propagation is 0 0.5. It can be seen that the propagation links are diverse and the propagation does not always spread on the, along the shortest path. Therefore, it's difficult for Gaussian-based methods to effectively deal with so many different propagation scenarios. In order to resolve these two assays, we propose a novel source localization method called Greedy for order neighbor localization, donate as GFNL. Next method. The framework of GFNL includes two necessary parts: greedy based sensor deployment strategy and direction path based source estimation strategy. Here is an example. A presents the deployed sensor selected by DS in the network, and C2F are the source estimation process of ES. First, I'd like to introduce the first part of GFNL DS. The goal of DS is to select a sensor set such that the sum of the distance from all other candidates to all sensors is the smallest. The selection idea is to use complete distance information to measure the node centrality and select the node having the maximum centrality score as the most greedy sensor. The update idea is to set the dis distance information related to the selected sensor before the next calculation of the sensor selection process. The right slide of this set is a sensor selection example. 
In every step, we randomly select one of the nodes having a maximum score as the sensor and update the distance information. Note that if there are still nodes that can be deployed in the network, but all distance information is updated to zero, like from picture 3 to picture 4, then we should roll back and find the node with the local maximum score as the sensor. Then, I'd like to introduce the source estimation part of GFNL ES. We propose a source estimator to infer the source. This estimator has three innovations. First, due to the greedy network coverage of DS, a candidate closer to observed sensors is more likely to be the source. Second, the distance of the actual path between the source and the sensor should be proportional to the observed time when such a sensor observes a propagation. Third, the reward and punishment mechanism of ES further modifies the probability of each candidate being the source, since the estimation candidate having a large score would be punished by the estimator, the candidate with the lowest score in the end is the predicted source. Next, I'd like to present our experiment. Before that, I would describe the experimental setting. The experimental datasets I use include six real-world datasets, and to perform the prediction ability of the localization method more rigorously, we use F-score as the performance metric instead of accuracy. This term, pression, is the proportion of the diffusion source in the predicted source from candidates, this means the result of F-score shouldn't be too high if the number of the same peak value is too large. And we use a heterogeneous SI as the propagation model whose infection rates follows a uniform distribution from 0.04 to 0.15. Note that the traditional experiments related to the detection accuracy we have designed. We also designed some meaningful experiments to highlight that GFNL can infer the source with an early response mechanism and a lower computational cost. More specifically, in order to further highlight the early localization capacity of GFNL, we implement some experiments to compare the response timestamp with the source estimation strategies of different methods are executed, and to rigorously eval evaluate the computational cost, the runtime experiments of different methods are implemented. This figure demonstrates the detection accuracy of six groups of development ratios under the low infection rate GFNL at least outperforms the optimal baseline DSGE by 121% on the bears of this figure shows experiments to compare the response timestamp of different methods. The timestamp for GFNL to start executing the localization is at least 38% faster than comparing methods as a whole. The gap of timestamps in a large-scale network is more pronounced, therefore, GFNL provides an early response mechanism for malicious information detection in social networks. This figure shows experiments to compare the runtime of different methods. Here, the average runtime of CPU consumption represented by the YS only records the estimation strategies because there is relative 
adequate time to pre-deploy sensors. We can get the conclusion that the CPU consumption of GFNL is approximately 10 times shorter than the optimal baseline of comparison methods. Finally, I am inclined to summarize our work. The principle of greedy coverage is adopted in the deployment process so that the sensor can observe the propagation information as early as possible. We attempt to reconstitute the actual propagation path during the source information process. The reward and punishment mechanism further corrects the source probability of each candidate. That's all. Thank you.